in Centaurus, we have Proxima Centauri, which is a red dwarf star. And that's down here. It's part of actually Alpha Centauri is like a five or six star system. And Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us in that system. It actually is the closest star to us. It is a red dwarf. And since it takes about a trillion years for a red dwarf to evolve slowly into a uh, white dwarf, the universe is not old enough for that to ever have happened. And every star that formed as a red dwarf is still a red dwarf. And since they'll hang around for a trillion years or so, we'll never see one turn into a white dwarf. Then we have the constellation of Cassiopeia. And within this constellation, we have all kinds of stuff. Uh, one is the Cass A type two supernova event, a massive star that collapsed and left behind a remnant and a neutron star in its core. This is Tycho's supernova remnant, which is the thermonuclear destruction of a white dwarf that was in a planetary, um, it was in a binary system with another star uh, that was destroyed. And then we have a star formation area, NGC 281. And you can see right here, there's like an open cluster where a whole group of massive stars just formed out of that uh, star forming region. Dorado, in the constellation Dorado, which is in the southern hemisphere, uh, we have 30 Doratus uh, in the large Magellanic cloud, um, which is several thousand light years away. Uh, it is actually the most active star formation region in the entire local group of galaxies. So uh, it's on the very edge of this where supernova 18, uh, 1987A um, was caught, when that the only one we've actually seen happen, is at the edge of that particular area. Cygnus, which has uh, it, um, the brightest star, of course, and Cygnus is Deneb. Also in Cygnus is Cygnus X1, which was the first suspected black hole candidate, which now has been verified to be a black hole, about a 15 solar mass black hole with a companion star. Uh, and over here are two different images of the North American Nebula. To give you an idea of how different something can look if it's taken from a different wavelength or through different filters, or if it's just colorized due to the energies uh, within one bandwidth within the image. So when you collect your images to study the different wavelength, multi-wavelength images, make sure that you read the description and you know what, what observatory or spacecraft image that particular, made that particular image, produced that image, so that you'll be able to recognize them uh, sometimes if you see the same image over and over, that kind of gets locked into your head and you don't recognize it. If someone is giving you an image where it's more into the background and it's smaller, or they've tilted it up or down or sideways. So make sure you study your images from all orientations. Castor, uh, Pollux and Castor. And also in this uh, constellation is um, Geminja, which is a neutron star, which happened to be the very first unidentified gamma ray source, which was then um, resolved into being a ne uh, neutron star. Then we have Libra in <coughs> the constellation of Libra. We have Lee 581, uh, which is a red dwarf. This red dwarf, uh, and look at this comparison chart, you can see that this, this red dwarf has six planets. And one of those planets happens to be smack dab in the middle <coughs> of the habitable zone. Uh, comparing it with the Earth and the Sun, you can see the Earth is not quite in the center of the habitable zone for the Sun. And this one is really in the center for this uh, red dwarf. So that is looking like a good possibility for maybe uh, some type of life form. Now, this is an artist illustration. And this is just to give you a little warning when you're out there rummaging around, um, because this is Reach for the Stars. And it's stars, but it's also planetary systems and other stars. Be careful out there, 
because if you get off into other websites, you can get drawn off into some really weird stuff. Okay, so we're, we're staying scientific here, um, and but people have in their head what they think things are gonna look like out there because we expect them to look like things we see around here. So do not be misled by any artist illustrations of planetary uh, habitats or environments. Stick to the websites that you're given and don't wander off. You'll find yourself in some strange places. Hercules, normally this little trapezoidal configuration right here is what you would identify in the night sky as Hercules. Um, and within Hercules is M13, which is a globular cluster. This is what it looks like far away, and this is what it looks like more close up. So make sure you see, um, um, look at images that, for instance, if someone showed you this, but you've only been looking at this, you might not recognize, and it might take you longer to identify it than it should during the event if you're not familiar with it in different orientations. Then we have Leo with Regulus. Lyra, in Lyra, uh, we have M57, uh, which is called the Ring Nebula. Again, this is another example of a planetary nebula with a white dwarf in the center that was from the core collapse of a mid-sized, sun-sized star. We have Orion uh, with Alpha Orionis, a red supergiant, and Rigel down here, which is a um, massive star high up on the main sequence, and it has actually evolved off the main sequence, but it hasn't gotten to the red supergiant stage yet. And also down here is the Orion uh, ne Nebula, which is a star formation complex. Perseus with Algol. And Sagittarius. Now Sagittarius is a very busy part of the sky. We usually recognize the asterism of the teapot, but you know, you're going to be looking at star charts that do not have any lines on them, or might have lines that are different than you are anticipating them to be. So when you learn the configuration of the night sky and the location of these constellations and these stars, you have got to study lots of different star charts. Um, and if you use last year, the ones for this year's event, 2012 event, if you look at that event where it's downloaded and look at all those different star charts that Dusty used in that event, they are all very, very different. And I had a hard time on some of those trying to figure out what was what. So do not use just common star charts with the lines on them. Uh, in the center of Sagittarius is Sagittarius A, that is the black hole in the center of our galaxy. Uh, this is a Chandra X-ray image survey, galactic survey along the galactic plane that encompasses Sag A. Uh, up here we have M17, that's called the Omega Nebula, but sometimes you see it listed as a Swan Nebula also. It is a region of star formation. And down here we have G357.23-0.82, um, the pulsar, sexy name, huh? Uh, Chandra called it the mouse that roared in the public release on the Chandra website. And this is a little pulsar, just isolated pulsar, all by himself, just whipping through space fast enough to produce a bow shock and a shock wave following. Scorpius, uh, Alpha Scorpi or Antares, the heart of the scorpion is a red supergiant also on its way to collapse. Uh, here's another picture of Antares, Alpha Scorpi. Right here is Alpha Scorpi, Rho Orpheuchi. Uh, M4 is a globular cluster. 